John here guys and today we're talking about the toothpick 1S setup. This is the official FPV cycle recommended spec. Yes, I did have the TP3 on the channel the other day, but that was a 2S um, sort of a monster micro, a more traditional, the older spec. This is the newer spec with these minty green FPV cycle motors. These are the 1202.5. 11,500 kV. Why is the kV so high? Because you're meant to run it on 1S. Um, this is the GNB 600 milliamp 1S pack. Yes, it comes with an XT30 already on there um, so that you get the maximum amount of voltage to this thing. This is using the Z's all-in-one 1S board. This is an ultra rare board that has been worked on so significantly by FPV cycle. It has mounting directly on their pinned mounting for the Team Black Sheep Pro Nano 32 video transmitter as well as the Crossfire Nano um, receiver so that you can still get maximum range both to your video and your control link. In addition to that, there's plenty of room for a capacitor on here, which I have to prevent any of those voltage spikes. I am using the Crossfire Nano antenna so that you can still get that low latency ultra control because you are gonna be going extremely fast speeds for a one cell craft with this thing. I'm using the Gemfan 3018 Biblade props. They fit on there perfectly. And rounding it out is the Runcam Nano 3 camera. Uh, that is probably one of the best little tiny micro cameras. This comes out at an extremely low weight so that you get that toothpick flavor. Cheap, inexpensive ultralight batteries. This is one of the most quiet park flyers I've ever flown, um, but it's not quite perfect. Uh, I did notice if you turn that Pro Nano 30T VTX up to the highest power level of 400 milliwatts, you would get brownouts. I kept getting brownouts on this thing. Um, if I would do a full punch out, the video would disappear. Now I noticed it was only the video transmitter browning out, not the whole system, because I would maintain control. As soon as I let off the throttle, the image would come right back. So it never actually made me crash or anything. It was just a little annoying. I hit up Kebab about that, and he was wondering if it was the power level. I didn't think of that, actually. So I lowered it down to 100 milliwatts, and it was totally fine. So 100 milliwatts is still enough to get some pretty good range. I would have rather maybe 200, but you gotta remember, when you're dealing with video transmitters, a multiple of four actually doubles your range. So going from 100 to 400 actually is only twice. It's not four times as far. So it's not really that big of a deal for this size of craft that I'm not gonna be doing long range anyway. I don't have a long range antenna on here, so that's probably, I do enjoy this baby tooth uh, single frame. Um, unlike the TP3, which has individual arms, this is all one single plate. So it's a little bit more breakable, but you get a reduction in weight that, I mean, I really nailed a tree with this thing. I'll see if I can include that clip and it just bounced off like nothing. You're really not gonna be breaking anything at this type of a low weight. This does end up a little bit pricey because I'm using a premium receiver, a premium video transmitter, a premium all-in-one board. I think the board alone is like a hundred bucks. So it does come up with a little bit of a pricey build for this, but there's nothing else that you can buy on the market that's gonna give you this level of performance. Now, Kabob did say there's a new board that's coming out that he's working on. And you know, it's like, he's like the P. Diddy of FPV. He's always hyping everything up. Yeah, but I love it. You know, that, that's why we're all plugged in. We can't wait for the things to drop on the website. They sell out immediately. So he's on to something. He really is. He kind of like reminds me of Cat Williams and that thing where he's like, you know, that shit I gave you last week, that was nothing. This shit right here, this shit right here. Remember that shit I gave you last week? It's not this shit right here. This shit right here, right here, this shit. You know, <laughs> so I mean, is the new board gonna be any better? I found this thing could handle crashes. It flew well, the performance was great. The only gripe was that I couldn't go 400 milliwatts on the video transmitter, but that's really not that big a deal. So check out some of this flight footage on thing, on this thing. If you wanna build up the ultimate one cell ripper, these batteries are quite cheap and they perform really well. I was still getting on some pretty good ripping 
two and a half to three and a half minutes. And if I was cruising, I could easily get a little over four minutes with something like this. There's also some 650 milliamp uh, batteries in the 1S size that you can get with an XT30 that are also pretty cheap. What do you think in the comments? What are you flying for your micros these days? Are you flying something on 2S, 3S, or are you giving these 1S thingies a try? Um, if you're talking about something you just don't want to have to worry about what it crashes into, if you want to bring the cost down, this is not particularly cheap. It's interesting that a 2S would probably be cheaper just because the boards are a little bit cheaper, um, but he really is on that goal to get the lightest thing possible, and this is most definitely it. Are you flying that baby tooth or TP3 flavor? If so, leave me in the comments what your setup is or if you're doing the 2S or 3S, I'd like to know that too. Thanks guys.